Hello and welcome to another exciting episode. I'm your friendly neighborhood technician and uh, welcome back. We are going to take apart the rest of the engine today. We're going to see if we can get the bottom oil pan off and the upper oil pan depending on how it's held on and possibly the heads. So um, let's get right to it. Normally I would set the timing if I weren't going to take the entire engine apart uh, but the timing is actually sort of already set um, except for it's probably not top dead center cylinder one. Uh, because the pulley, which I took off a little prematurely, but like I said, I'm just going to take the, basically the entire engine apart, except for the crank and the pistons. Those are going to stay in there, but um, the, the and the water pump actually has the timing mark on it, which is right here, or the timing that right there is for checking the uh, where the, where the uh, the crankshaft is is timed, which is on your crankshaft pulley right here, your harmonic balancer and you're looking for right there, that four and the five. That's where that is, but that timing mark is about right here. When it's all put together, you can see that's where the uh, um, the key is right there, and the timing mark for the, uh, the, uh, the, the mark from the water pump is about, is about right there, but the crankshaft fully is about right here, that four and the five, so it's about 90 degrees off. So that's not really set, but if you look down here, there's a special tool for pinning each camshaft gear. You can see the, the hole right there. And they actually already line up. You can see the hole right in there. And the back of this one is right there. You can already see the holes already line up in there. Also on this side too. I didn't even crank the engine over or anything. I just found that the, uh, the holes, that one sort of lines up. And this one is right there. So that's where you're actually supposed to line up those Line up all these, those holes, put some pins in there, and then that way you can keep your, uh, um, that's where your, your basic setting is for the uh, uh, for this. But you can see this right here, that's got a lot of play. That shouldn't be like that, so. Uh, but this timing chain is gonna get replaced, and uh, the timing uh, gears and everything in there, the tensioner also, I'll replace that tensioner as well. All right, let's try to get this bad boy turned over. I'm trying not to hurt myself. Can't promise that though. <laughs> Making another mess. See, there's more pieces of the timing guides. I think I took this thing apart. Here we go. You can see some of the uh, oil, or maybe is it? Oh, look at that. I don't know how much I like that. That's all plastic chunks. Stuck inside the oil pickup and clogging it. I don't know how to feel about that. You can see chunks right there. You can see chunks right there. Chunks all over the place. Well, the only thing to do is take it further apart. But that, I don't like that at all. Well, I tried digging out some of the plastic from the oil pickup. You can see that I got a lot of chunks out of there. Mainly all that was in there, this was in there, but there's still a bunch, a lot of fine chunks down in there. See, so I'm gonna have to take out the oil pump and then um, dump it upside down, see if we can get anything out of there. I don't see any excessive wear on the oil pump gear. It's way down in there. So that, looks okay for now so hopefully this thing didn't go too far starving itself of oil so first we're gonna take off the oil level sensor there's two eight millimeter bolts for it 
and then we're going to take off the two uh, 13 millimeter bolts actually it's probably three 13 millimeter bolts for the oil pump itself There's one more 13 millimeter bolt that holds the pulley onto the water pump. Here doesn't look too bad. Still has all the teeth. Alrighty, let's try to get all that stuff out. Maybe I'll replace this oil pump, who knows, but it seems you have gotten a lot of the stuff out. There's a few pieces in there still, but the screen right there. Maybe a few more chunks of stuff in there. Looks like that was the most of it. Next, we are going to remove the cans. You can see I already got the timing covers off, and they're, they're the timing cover, the, the cylinder head cover, the front covers off, um, with the adjusters and um, the distributor caps off, and. Uh, the distributor pieces right here so but one thing I wanted to point out Mercedes did something extremely smart and uh, um, kind of helped a lot of people out you see right here there's a one right there they also they numbered the position of the camshaft bearing caps and they numbered the cylinder heads you can see right there there's a one and then on this one you can see where's the two there's a two right there and there's also a two right there so they numbered each one of these three four five well, there's five over there. There's five for each cam. And then uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They did that all throughout the engine. So you know where the bearing cap goes. And then you also know which position it goes in. You can see the ten is right. Where'd that ten go? I had found it. Oh, it's way down in there. Right. There it is. You can see the ten right there. So can't really get it mixed up. Okay, here we are with the cams out. Now, every time I see something uh, taking apart this engine um, that uh, scares me a little bit, I see something else that makes me feel like, oh, it's not that bad. Because if you look at all those bits and everything that was clogged up in that uh, that oil pickup, it looks like that oil pickup was, was clogged and this thing was starving for oil. But at the same time, if you look at these cam uh, bearing journals, there's perfect. There's not any hint of excessive wear. Like, I mean, that's a little discolored right there, but... I don't see any, uh, I don't feel anything. Um, these ones look perfect. This one looks a little dirty because it's, you know, smudging down a little from there. But it doesn't look anything excessively worn and uh, stuff like that. And these things, the cams are at the top, so it's the last place to get freaking oil. So, um, right now, I'm just going to keep going and pulling it. I want to see what the cylinder, uh, the cylinder walls look like. So, I'm going to pull this head off real quick. Well, here we are. Passenger side cylinder head off. And honestly, it doesn't look too bad. You see a little bit of discoloration right here, but um, it's not really, you can't really feel it. So it's just barely, barely anything. I wouldn't call it scoring. I wouldn't call that uh, 
um, anything out of the ordinary because like I said you can't feel it there's no uh, ridges there's nothing right there this one you have a little bit a uh, little bit more but again nothing you can feel I can't get a catch a fingernail on it or anything so I'm gonna call that okay I mean it's not bad for a car with a hundred and or actually this engine came out of a car with a uh, 90 something thousand miles so we'll keep taking turning it apart and here we are with the other head off. Now we got both heads off. Now I need to figure out how to get that lower oil pan off so I can reseal that. And also so I can get this front timing cover off. But these ones, these cylinders actually look pretty good. They look a lot better than the other side. And the other side isn't even that bad. This is just surface, surface schmutz. There's a little bit of discoloration right there nothing bad can't really tell what this one looks like top of the pistons are a little dirty but it's the inside of an engine what do you expect then that one there's a little bit of stuff over there but again can't even feel it so i'm gonna go ahead and uh get these surfaces next step is get these surfaces cleaned off use a straight edge to measure the to see if there's any uh warping in the block especially right here between the cylinders but you can see right here where the old head gasket was. Head gasket wasn't blown. You don't have any leakage between the cylinders. You don't have any coolant leaks outside of the cylinders or any of that. So I'm going to go ahead and say that that's straight enough to put new head gaskets on. Same thing with this side of the block. You can see right here and here and here. There's no uh, coolant leaks or anything like that between the, uh, between the cylinders or elsewhere. So... Looks good enough now, but still, I want to check the uh, um, the cylinder head uh, to see if there's any. Uh, um, make sure it's straight. Then I'll check or check the uh, the block mating surface, and then I'll check. I'll do also do the uh, the uh, the head too to make sure that both those cylinder heads are straight. Here's the other head that's out. This head looks uh, just like that one. Um, you can see there's a little bit of buildup inside the bolt holes for that, but I'm going to clean all this out. I'm going to take out all these oil tubes right here. Same thing on that one. All those oil tubes, put new O-rings on. I'll take all these uh, lifters out, clean those up, throw those back in, clean the head off, clean the front of it re so I can reseal all these surfaces. And like I said, I'm going to go ahead and replace the um, timing chain and the timing chain tensioner because I'm not going to take it apart this far and not. So um, just something i got to do. Here's one of the cam magnets. I'm gonna go ahead and replace both of these as well. These are what uh, adjust the cams, um, and uh, but the, and these are looking a little crusty, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace those also. Those got mounted to the front of the cylinder head cover, uh, so and there's two of them, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace those. Here are the cams outside of the vehicle. This side is the, or outside of the engine actually. This is the passenger side cams, or these are the passenger side cams. This is what goes into that cam adjuster. And this thing right here, you can see it nice and springy there. Um, I'll clean that off as well. It's not binding at all. It feels real nice and smooth. So that's in good order. And you can see that the any, all these surfaces are really, really shiny. And uh, not shiny, but you can see the, sh the edges are really nice and sharp. So um, engine wasn't starved of oil. I don't see any excessive wear on any of these teeth right here. Same thing with this one right here. You can see that everything all these teeth are really nice and sharp which is what we're looking for um, as well as these cam lobes you can see the cam lobes um, are in good condition as well no excessive wear especially on the peak of the cam right here those are really 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 good condition also and as well as the uh, the bearing journals or the, bear, the, the bearing surfaces right here right here and down here you can see they're not worn nice and clean which is awesome they're better than what i was expecting with that oil pump pickups clogged with plastic bits which um, are all from those timing chain guides that i'm going to replace well here's about as much trouble as i feel like getting myself into pay no attention to those uh, engine mount uh, the engine stand arms that aren't attached to anything they were attached to the pan there right there at the back but i had to take the upper pan off so I got a prop rod right here holding it in place. But, oh well, gotta do what you gotta do. Timing covers off, timing chain is off. And now we can uh, 
I'm gonna have to replace some of these o-rings here there was a couple o-rings right here that need to get replaced right there also right there right there um nice pretty bronze color though that the oil has stained it i took the uh idler the timing idler off right there you can see the gear right here is also in good condition you can see right there all the teeth are nice and sharp and they're not excessively worn one thing i do want to point out is usually germans are nice and orderly but as you can see there's no rhyme or reason to these main bearing bolts and nuts you can see right here and they're not even in a straight line right there you figure that'd be nice and perfect and straight since it's one piece of metal that it goes in no chilling at an angle it kind of bugs me see that one's off to one side and right here's a big old gap this one's nice in the middle that one's nicely in the middle too or actually that one's even all a little off center i know that's probably in the middle that one right there no -uh. it's going off this way they're all like that though but that'd be some kind of reason for it i don't know what it is just looks ugly to me oh well that's just me complaining other than that everything else doesn't look too bad you know just aside from being stained with oil even the the cylinder in there doesn't look too bad well this is as far as it's getting taken apart i'm not replacing any pistons or anything like that so now we just need to clean everything up start putting it back together here's the inside of the timing cover you can see right there there's that o-ring there's a couple o-rings right there some there at the top all those need to get replaced along with that front crankshaft seal and here's one of the timing guides the banana looks like as it's affectionately called so you're gonna have to reseal and put it back on well that's it for today's exciting episode my next trick putting it together without messing anything up.